Hello and welcome to another episode of No Grossman Live. I almost just like coughed in my own opening. It's like, should I redo it? I guess not. Let's just live in the moment and show reality. So welcome to another episode. Sorry for being gone for the uh, last, I believe I missed two weeks, which is just unbelievable that two weeks went by. Um, I literally just didn't sleep. And uh, yeah, this is the uh, the thing that fell through my fingers, which um, kind of ate away at the little bit of sleep that I had. But past that point, <laughs> odd intro to the episode. Let's just get existential uh, and an odd apology. On today's episode, what we will be talking about is uh, my Delivering Kindness campaign. We actually had the day of delivery um, since the last episode, which was amazing. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that. We ended up on the news. Really cool. Uh, two, we're going to look at introverts and extroverts, how the launch went, how the app is doing right now, updates on it, stuff like that, because uh, that happened as well. So much stuff. I finally got back on set after, geez, from March to, gosh, we'll go into it, but Finally got back on set, and I did a bunch, a bunch of stuff. Every day was packed, which was unbelievable to go from, like, nothing to a bunch. It's such a strange ride, but it's one that you're, like, really excited about. Anyway, another thing that happened, so much stuff that we're going to talk about. It was my girlfriend's birthday, which was really nice. I'm going to talk about that for a little bit because I love my girlfriend. Uh, five, we're going to... um. I learned about something called rando nodding. We're going we're gonna to talk about that for a little bit. And then, of course, we're going to end with some song recommendations and, of course, some recommendations of what you should watch with your eyeballs because uh, it's a pandemic. We're all bored inside watching everything we can. At least if you're in the United States, you got to still be inside. Other countries, I think they're chilling right now. But uh, besides the point, let's get right into the episode. Here we go. So opening up on delivering kindness, which I expect everyone has at least some sort of knowledge about. For a quick backstory, delivering kindness is a campaign that I started way, way back uh, in February, and it is now July. No, it is now August. Oh my gosh, it's August. It's now August. But the date of delivery was the 27th of July. So essentially, the campaign went from essentially February 14th-ish, February 18th, all the way to July 27th um, when we completed it. So Delivering Kindness was a campaign um, where I got you guys, my viewers, my followers, um, to help me in raising funds and support to essentially, our first goal was to help feed people experiencing homelessness. Expanded during the whole pandemic thing, but you guys all probably know the spiel by now. The point is, the day delivery happened, and it was... Honestly, an amazing day, like a hands down amazing experience. It was awesome. Let me try to go through a thesaurus and find more words that don't start with an A. <sighs> a gorgeous day. No, it was it was awesome. So we shot a video and the video is going to be coming out this week, um, as in seven days from now. It might be next Tuesday. I'm not sure when I'm going to drop it, but essentially you'll see in the video. But to explain the day. We got up super, super early and uh, drove into the city. So I live on the outskirts of Los Angeles. We're going into downtown Los Angeles uh, by Skid Row. And the goal was to deliver to three locations. We had a Los Angeles Fire Department, station number nine. We had the Good Samaritan Hospital. And we also had LA Mission. So we uh, got there. We started about 10 o'clock making uh, a total of over 600 pizzas. Um which is a mind-boggling amount of pizzas. But, uh, so I got there, and it was me. We used two Pizza Huts in order to make this happen, but I showed up in the morning, and, and I showed up early. I was the first one there before the, the Pizza Hut representatives were there. Uh, so it was me, and I was just talking to the staff and stuff. They had to obviously take my temperature. And, um, uh, when we for Smosh did, gosh, I can't even remember what the show is called, but when we made pupusas in the pupusa truck, we all had to get licensed um, like food service license, and now it's expired, but I remember all the training, so obviously, and it's not hard training, wash your hands, wear gloves, you know, simple stuff, don't pick your nose, but, uh, so I went in there, and I essentially had to get suited up as if I was working at Pizza Hut, and I was helping them box the pizzas, um, put the pizzas into the bags, we had printed out, you guys had commented on a couple of my posts, so I did a t-shirt giveaway, 
Um, and on the t-shirt giveaway, I asked people to write kind comments to either frontline workers or people experiencing homelessness. So we grabbed those comments, we retyped them up, reorganized them, um, and then made them into this kind of cool box topper um, that I woke up super early that morning. I was at Office Max, 7.59, right when the doors open, got a bunch of the copies printed, and then uh, we stuck them on the boxes, which was really funny because we're making 600 plus pizzas and you would never guess that it takes longer for you to fold and tape on 600 plus pieces of paper than it does to make the pizzas. Yeah, so essentially the day opened up uh, with me folding paper and sticking it on um, hundreds of boxes, hundreds of pieces of paper, hundreds of pizzas that we then loaded up. And uh, the first location, we just delivered uh, a bunch of large pizzas to the fire station because we figured large pizza is probably better for them, but for, you know, public safety, public health, um, at the hospital and at LA Mission, we went with personal pan pizzas because you can eat it yourself. Um, it's not really a good time to encourage sharing, even though sharing is a great thing to happen. But uh, we delivered the pizzas to the fire station, and we didn't expect it, or at least I didn't expect it, but um, Christian, who works with the company that helped me put together this entire campaign, Pixel Bank, which I'll talk about in a little bit. He actually put together a press release um, and sent it out to some local news, and they actually showed up. Like, they got this press release with, like, barely enough time that they would even look at it. But um, it was really cool that they showed up in order to film so that we could kind of be shown on television. I guess that's, like, so surface level. But what that really is is like we get to share the message and the kind of kind act that we did together to the world to show a couple of things. One, that people want to help. People are helping in any way that they can find. Two, that the people that are helping are global, that they're not just local, even though they have a local impact, that my fans, my followers, the people who support me, were able to rally around a goal that I had, a campaign that I created, um, in order to actually do an act of real world good. And to kind of show to anyone who's like over 55 and wants to talk shit about the internet or something like that, to be like, look at what we're doing. Like, what are you doing? You're like arguing about not wearing a mask. Anyway, weird rhetoric. But uh, Channel 7 was there, which was super fun. A uh, local Channel 7 news here. Um, which, oh my God, I don't even want to say the company because I don't know if it's going to be the right one or not. NBC? ABC7. ABC7. ABC. <laughs> so our Channel 7 News was there, which was super cool, and there's footage in the video if you don't want to look up the news story yourself. And after that, we went to the Good Samaritan Hospital with 300-plus pizzas, um, and we helped organize those. Uh, so essentially, the heads of each department of the um, hospital would come out and they would bring a cart or something um, and we would help load the cart with a specific number. You know, the surgeons want 54 pizzas, the whatever need 25 pizzas. Um, so we would help them kind of stack the numbers and they would put it into the cart and then they would take it into the hospital and then distribute them, obviously for public health reasons, um, which was super cool because the news was there as well, which we didn't expect. Um, but it's kind of funny. They showed up because the audio on the first interview wasn't good but it turned out to work for us because we just got more footage. But yeah, so the news is at the second location, which was cool. We got to do another interview for ABC7, and that's one that they actually aired on television, which was super cool to see the newscasters that I kind of grew up watching or was on my television, you know, along with the other channels. Uh, they're interchangeable, but uh, essentially newscasters that I recognized like said my name and talked about it, which was super cool. And then we set up to go to the third location, LA Mission, with 300 plus pizzas. And the LA Mission is an amazing organization, and it's one that I have like an awesome relationship with, which is super cool because they were excited about delivering kindness, and they reached out in order to express how thankful they were and how cool it was. They they really hadn't seen a campaign like ours um, be organized like ours, kind of with like we are kind of an example of like a grassroots movement, although I'm kind of co-opting the term, obviously, because I'm not political or anything. The movement isn't political. Um, but a lot of the times they kind of work with these larger companies like Omaze or, or any of them, any of these large charity organizations where they're taking, you know, big cuts. Now they're bringing in large numbers, but they're taking big cuts and like they're kind of more 
like a business, like an industry, which like not to discount the work that they do, but the work that they do comes at a price. You know what I mean? Um, and with us, there's, there's none of that. Like it's the least amount of money possible that could go to like processing fees for like processing any payment, which is what happens to any business when they process a payment. There's no way around that. But as much money as possible goes to the actual cause, which is amazing. Like, obviously, I'm not taking any of the money, but there's no real middleman, which is why Pixel Bank is, like, such a cool and awesome new thing. But, yeah, so LA Mission, we went there, and it was funny because I had obviously communicated the date with them before, but my two contacts actually had the day off. So I was calling and calling and calling and calling, and no one was there. I must have left, like, 20 messages and I was like, we're on our way. Like, I hope you show up. Like, you know, long story short is we show up there and we don't even know where the front door is. So we go around the back and we find a side gate. And lucky enough, like somebody who works in the kitchen was just like parking. And we were like, hey, like we're here for this and this and this. And they're like, oh, I remember hearing about that. Is that today? We're like, yeah, we have them all here. <laughs> they're like, oh, okay, cool. Let's get the chef. So uh, Chef Carlos, who is this amazing guy. He came out and he helped us. We we put together uh, or we helped load all the pizzas into kind of those those school cafeteria trays or like baking sheet racks or whatever. We loaded them up with 300 plus pizzas. Chef Carlos was an unbelievable guy, like super, super thankful, super nice, was talking to us, like just overall kind guy. And he's been the head chef at LA Mission for over 20 years, he said. But yeah, Delivering Kindness went amazing. And um, yeah, Delivering Kindness was not only an astounding success as like a charity, um, and like a campaign, but also for Pixel Bank, which is a brand new platform, it kind of shows how successful it can be. So like things like Kickstarter and Patreon, like there's all of these versions of how to raise money either quickly or long term for like your goal. And Patreon, I don't have much experience with, but that's kind of something where there's a large commitment. Obviously, you have kind of rewards, you expect people to pay in monthly you know, kind of like a larger thing, which works for a lot of people. Kickstarter, once again, works for a lot of people. But with Kickstarter, I don't know how much they take. I think it's like 10%, maybe it's even 20%. Just these large cuts that are kind of being taken out of something that's like raising money for my hospital bills or like, you know, my friend's dog, like we got to bury him or like anything at all. It's kind of hard for me to justify using something that would take so much money that people are donating and not to discount anyone who's used the, the 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 websites legitimately, but the website itself, it's kind of like, hey, like you're kind of taking a big cut out of like a charity thing. So Pixel Bank is kind of a solution for that. It's super, super easy to set up. And it's a way for you to raise money um, and kind of turn photos into money, essentially, and help kind of raise funds for whatever it is you'd like to set up. So it can be a charity, obviously, um, like what I did. Uh, it can be for a specific charity. It can be a charity campaign you're setting up. Maybe you want to, like, redo your local park or, like, it doesn't matter. Or it can be a, something, like, you want to raise money for. Hey, I need to fix my tires. Hey, I want to set up a podcast studio. Like, anything at all. And um, you can use the platform in order to raise money to do those things. And it's kind of like a more short-term way to raise the money. Ah, it's a bad pitch. Yeah, just just check it out. It's more like a, in my opinion, it's just a more streamlined, more effective version. Um, and it's also a version that takes less money from what's being raised, which is cool. It's also a version that lets people who can't directly donate money still help by, like, sharing photos, supporting it, that then through those photos, other people can kind of follow the link and, yeah, then support whatever your campaign is. But the reason why I bring it up, not only because I use Pixel Bank and, like, I'm thankful for the platform, but uh, they're now doing an open beta. So I was, like, in an early, early stage of using the platform, and now they're accepting beta applications. So if you're interested in doing it to raise money for a new trumpet or to help a school field trip or to feed people pizza, like, literally anything at all, um, you can now submit to be a beta tester. So that's pixlbank.com. And the best part is when the video is released, you'll know my delivering kindness video. But uh, we're doing a big giveaway. So if you sign up for beta testing, um, you'll not only be submitted to win our $100 Pizza Hut gift card, but you'll also be submitted to win, I think it's $250 in your Pixel Bank account. So essentially, 
you could win $250 for whatever you set up your campaign to be, which can be feeding people pizza, buying your new trumpet, doing whatever you'd like. Um, and then on top of that, there's also another section where if you sign up to be a beta tester, you create a campaign, and you DM me on Instagram your campaign page and what your campaign is about and why you're raising money. I want to get my cat medicine. I want new shoes. I think it would be great if I just bought $5, $250, whatever amount worth of chicken nuggets and threw them out my car window. Whatever you're raising money for. You DM it to me. I'm going to put your submission in, randomize it, and I'm going to pick a bunch of winners and I'm going to then send them personally $5 for their campaign. So in the ending pitch on it, check out PixelBank. Sign up to be a beta tester. The platform is really cool and it could be useful to you. And then on top of that, by signing up to be a beta tester, you might win $100 to Pizza Hut. You could win $250 in your Pixel Bank account, which is real money. Like, that's just cash that you can use. And then if you sign up, make a campaign, message me about it, DM me on Instagram, explain what it's about, tell me why you made it. I might send you five more dollars on top of that. So that's your pitch. Check out the platform. Overall, though, Delivering Kindness was a resounding success. And I have everyone to thank for that. I have you to thank for that. I have Pizza to thank for that, which I have you to thank for that again. And I have Pixel Bank to thank for that, which also I have you to thank for that on top of it. So really, I was, I am incredibly proud of what we were able to do. And like my name is on it, which is amazing. But the best part about it is that my name is on something that is a group community act of good. So, yeah, that just makes me smile. So thank you for helping me help my community. Yeah. On to the next topic. So in between the time of the last episode and this episode, my app Introverts and Extroverts officially launched on both the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Um, the launch went amazing, um, and it's still going amazing. Well, okay, let me preface. The launch went 80%. 80%, but 80% is a B. That's great. So the reason why the launch went 80%. So first and foremost, the response to the app has been amazing. People are really enjoying it, enjoying playing it with their friends, which is nice to hear that I'm not the only one because I think the game is actually really fun. Um, you get a couple of friends together. You all commit to just like, let's do it. Let's play it. And you don't expect that you actually are like finding difficulty in doing some of these um, at least that's me. Whenever I play like a truth or dare game or one that has like suggestions or like it's cards, it's like, mm, suck a toe, kiss the person to your left. Who's your crush? And it's like, we've got none of that. We do have suck your toe, suck your own toe. You're not going to suck someone else's toe. You can't have truth or dare without a suck your toe. <laughs> but, but yeah, these challenges are really fun. And the best part is that you, the players, get to submit them, and I go through them, I curate them, and you guys come up with stuff that I could never come up with, and we add them into the game, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger, more creative. And uh, yeah, if you submit something into the app, you can also submit your social media handle, and it'll be right there in the game for everyone to see. So they know who to blame and who to tag when, uh, when they end up having to do your challenge. So that's the good, the good. The other good is now two weeks into the launch, we've uh, we've surpassed 10,000 downloads. Um, I think we're at somewhere around 12,000 total downloads between the two platforms, which is an amazing response. Um, yeah, and we're going to keep pushing it, obviously keep updating it. I mean, our, our minimal time frame is six months, so we're looking at six months of heavy updating. Um, yeah, and then after that, reevaluating the next six months, and the app will always be there, but it's whether or not we'll be, like, updating every other week because um, it takes time to get approval. So yeah, that's been an amazing response to the launch. Now, the bad part is, and it's something that we we would have been unable to test on. We could not have caught this bug. We had a bug. We had a bad bug. We had a bug at our launch, and we had no idea it was there, and we did a great job debugging. I have help from the Thunkable team. I'm working with them, so I've got if I don't know what's going on, they know what's going on. Our bug, and it's such a strange bug, I don't understand it, but it's a bug specific to devices. It affects both Apple and Android devices, and the bug is the device. Like, once you download the app, if you run into the bug when you download it the first time, 
you can delete it and download it a million times and you will always get the bug. And it's so strange because you can't get the bug if when you installed it, you don't get it. Like it's a, it's a random fluke, random, random fluke, but it's a huge fluke. It's like a 6% fluke. Like 6% of people are running into this where they can't play the game and they can't download the game to play it again. So it's horrible, horrible. But we have a fix. It's being pushed right now. It's in the process of being approved right now as I'm speaking today, the day that this is being released. And the update should be out within the next two to three days. And the amazing part is that this update was a pre-planned update and we were able to get the bug fix in there. So... In this update, we add, oh, I think it's over 50 new challenges, um, all submitted um, through the app. Um, and we also have the bug fix, which is amazing. So if you ran into a bug on launch that you couldn't play the game, a uh, new version will be out. I'll announce it on my social media. I would say within the next four days of listening to this podcast. So this week, um, you'll be able to then re-download it and be able to play the game um, with both fingers crossed you know, with, with hope, but this is a bug fix. And the reason we wouldn't have been able to catch it is because we just didn't have enough devices. Um, it's a 6% fluke thing. So like neither, uh, none of our test devices, cause you also can only test a certain number of devices, um, under at least Apple's kind of policy, um, which makes sense. Not trying to talk, you know, shade to anyone. Is that a term? Talk shade. People don't say that. Um, they say throw shade anyway. <laughs> So yeah, we, we, we had no chance to catch this bug um, before launch, but now we were able to fix it, which is amazing. Um, so bug gone, update coming this week, new challenges, you'll be able to play the game, and uh, we have a steady plan for the next at least six months of constant updating. Um, so I'm really excited to see where this game goes. Um, yeah, I'd love to just keep it going if people are still having fun with it. And this is still a version one. I mean, the update's going to come out, so maybe it's a V1.1. But there's a lot of room for growth within this app. And, yeah, I'm just excited to see where time takes it. Thank you for supporting the app, and thank you for supporting the launch. Please share it with your friends. If you haven't downloaded it yet, download it now. Play it with your friends. And update's coming this week with even more challenges. So you you got a lot to look forward to. Now moving on to my insane work week, the last two weeks, which I am ever grateful for, ever thankful. Um, not only delivering kindness, the day of delivery madness, um, and not only our introverts and extroverts launch, but in the exact same two weeks, finally, finally, productions, in-person productions started to open up. So this meant that I finally had an opportunity to see all of my friends at Smosh again. Um, I hadn't seen anyone. I hadn't seen anyone because we're also all quarantined on top of it. I, I've seen people socially distanced, like through a Zoom call. Um, but I hadn't seen anyone for like four months. That, that's the longest I've gone not seeing these people for almost five years. So it was strange. And it's also the longest I've gone not working in almost five years. So very, uh, scratch that. The other time was when Defy Media went bankrupt in between working at Defy and, and Mythical. Essentially the same period. And essentially the same type of depression that hit. Besides the point, the positive, I got to get back on set, which meant uh, everyone got tested before we went there. We had to send out our temperatures every morning. Everyone was wearing masks unless you were on camera. Um, super, super safe. And, you know, everyone's fine still. Um, we didn't have any scares. We didn't have anything. It, it went perfectly. Um, gosh, over two weeks, I think I shot nine or ten days total. Um we shot like eight videos, one of which was for Smosh Games. Um, gosh, we might have shot more than eight videos. We might have shot like 10 videos now that I'm thinking about it. We shot a couple new formats for um, Smosh Main, which is really exciting. Um, yeah, I don't know how much I can share. Uh, yeah, shot a couple sketches, shot some uh, Smosh Pit stuff, got in a Smosh Game shoot, got in two Smosh Game shoots, actually, which I'm super excited about. So I had so much fun seeing my friends again, shooting with them. Getting to work again, it really was um, an antidote to my soul. Because, you know, my soul my soul felt poisoned. Um, yeah, working was amazing. And it didn't just stop there. I also got two other awesome opportunities, which was I also shot with the Warp Zone. I shot with them twice, actually. Um, a video that is out now, which is their Infinity War sketch. I played uh, Spider-Man in it, which is so fun, shooting with Warp Zone. They always have these, like, 
dialogue heavy, like super like, gosh, what it like sarcastic, like really just over analyzing like the bullshit that is like a lot of these films and they're huge fans. And like, I'm a fan, I'm not a huge fan, but they're huge fans. So it's like with so much love that they just tear apart, like all the lore, all the, the hope of logic in any of these movies making sense. Uh, but they do it in comedy. That's not just like talking about it. They kind of form it into a sketch. So with their Infinity War sketch, they form this dialogue around a random guy getting teleported to the battlefield. Um, you know, the massive Infinity War fight. Not Infinity War. Jesus. Um, is it Infinity War? What's the last one called? I don't even know at this point. There's like 12 of them. Whatever the last one is. The one where Thanos, you know, does the shit. He, you know, Tony does. Yeah, I'm not going to spoil it. You know what movie I'm talking about. The sketch is really fun. I get to play Spider-Man, which is always awesome. But I also shot for them. Then at the... So I opened with them. That was the first shoot of this two-week period. Then I also closed with them. They were the last shoot where um, I actually played Robin in an upcoming sketch. Um, I don't want to spoil too much. But that one's also really fun. And it's a Batman commentary. Um, Batman, Two-Face, they're in court. I don't know if I'm spoiling it. But yeah, really fun. So keep your eye out for that one and check out the Infinity War sketch that already came out. Final project that I was able to to, to do this uh, little two-week period, final work project, was I actually booked a voiceover gig um, or a voiceover job. Um, and it was a voiceover for a commercial. I can't speak about it um, or I can't reveal anything about it, but it'll air in the Midwest. So in the Midwest, you might hear my voice um, starting, I would say, within the next three weeks, four weeks, and you'll probably hear it for at least six months, um, unless they decide to cut it for uh, whatever reason. But um, I play a son. Um, what can I say about it um, without legally doing something wrong? And it's not because, like, there was anything sketchy. It's just a standard NDA. Like, I can't reveal anything about what is going to happen. Um <laughs> But yeah, keep your ear out for it, I guess, if you live in the Midwest of the United States. And um, it's an ad for, I can't say. <laughs> but yeah, keep an eye out for it. It's uh, it's fun. Um, it's a quick one. Yeah, I play a son. I'm a little peeved at my dad. That's, I think, all I can say. So another thing that happened in this little two-week period. Yeah, I guess this episode, I should title this like my journal. Like, it's like I haven't written in my journal for a while, which like, thank you for listening. I appreciate this video podcast audio journal. Um, it's actually kind of nice. It's like my own therapy. <laughs> so it was my girlfriend's birthday. And um, I love my girlfriend. She's a little bit younger than me, so she just turned 23. And 23 feels very different than all the other years, at least in my personal experience. Um, if you're older, I'm sure you can relate. If you're younger, get ready to relate. Um, my brain was just really like Taylor Swift. It, it went up to 22. Um, and 22, you feel 22. 22 is great. But my brain really had not imagined a period of time after 22. So 23 was like the first time that I felt I was like, oh, this just keeps going. Um, like, this is it. Like, n now I'm in a new chapter. I'm in a new section. You know, I just finished the first layer of bread in this hamburger and most of the hamburgers to come, and it's going to be a vast array of ingredients. Um, and then I'll end with another slice of bread where I die. <laughs> That's my analogy. But yeah, it was my girlfriend's birthday, and um, we decided for her birthday, because um, we couldn't go to the beach. Normally we go to the beach because she really likes the beach. Um, we went to Sonic's. You know Sonic's drive through I am... So jealous of anyone who lives close to a Sonic's drive through The closest Sonic's to me is an hour and 20 minutes. The second closest one is an hour and 40 minutes. And they're in opposite directions. I'm literally in a Sonic-less zone. Which, like, is a horrible thought. I'm in a, I'm in a dead zone when it comes to Sonic. Sonic is... Sonic is possibly my favorite fast food restaurant because they are killing the dessert game on the level of, like, they do not give a shit. They do not give a shit. We went to Sonic, and, like, we scratched the surface. We barely... The amount of customization and sugar and coloring and flavor that you can add to any form of dessert, whether it's slushy, smoothie, juice, tea, shake, 
ice cream. I, I It's everything. A hot dog. It's insane. We got a uh, blue raspberry slushie, and we added nerds in it. And that was so goddamn delicious because they do not give a shit. They really gave us, like, old school slushy, straight sugar, straight dye, like this thick slush. And it's like they just took one of those little Halloween, like, nerds candy things, you know, the awesome ones in the cardboard. It's like they just opened that up and tossed it in there. Like, there's no holding back. They really give you exactly what you asked for. It's as if their dessert chef is seven. You know what I mean? And, like can do anything they want. And that's who you want making your, like, slushy dessert. Yeah, make it blueberry. Make it thick. Yeah, put the syrup in it, nerds. And you can add so many more things. Like, we stopped early. And this thing thickened my blood. I knew I was getting diabetes. It literally changed the color of my turd. The turd that I took the following day was dyed. It was green. And I imagine that's because the brown had so much blue dye put into it. I don't know if that makes green, but green came out. They're tater tots. Unbelievable. Such good tater tots. These are just the perfect tater tot. Napoleon Dynamite would be ecstatic. He would need to get another pair of cargo pants just to fit all the tater tots. Jeez. (laughs) Sonic, I think Sonic is my favorite fast food place. I've never had a hot dog from there. It's what I'm going to get the next time I go. I always get the burger because it's safe. But honestly, live it up. When you're at Sonic, live that shit up. So yeah, we went to Sonic. Amazing birthday dinner, right? Isn't that what every girl wants on their birthday? Go to Sonic. (laughs) So we go to Sonic, but that is not where it stops. It gets even better than Sonic. How could it get better, you ask? I'll tell you how. The Sonic is located next to Santa Anita Horse Track out here in Los Angeles. Or out in Santa Anita, not in Los Angeles. It'd be called the Los Angeles horse track. So by the Santa Anita horse track, there's some areas, some areas in residential streets where there are peacocks. Now, I don't know if you live somewhere where there are just peacocks, but for me, no. So peacocks, I mean, amazing animal, But these aren't just any peacocks. These peacocks literally live in the neighborhood. Like there's like a five block area where there were dozens and dozens of peacocks of varying ages and genders and family groups and everything. And they were so friendly. Like walk up to the car friendly. Like they saw us eating food and one walked up. And I keep old food in my car. That's how I roll old like saltines, crackers, anything that I think a bird might eat. Because my girlfriend and I like to feed birds in parking lots when we're waiting for food or anything like that. We just will drive to a parking lot and feed birds. It makes us happy. Leave us alone. So we had a bunch of old food. And so we literally spent like 40 minutes. Uh, My girlfriend had an old bag of flax seeds from like a long time ago. A long time ago. Like three years ago that she was going to make like face masks with. But she never did. So she was like, let's feed birds with this. So we had this big bag of flax seed. We were feeding peacocks out of our hands. Like, it was amazing. Like, truly amazing. I think I have footage on my phone. I never posted it because, like, you know, it's just for me and my girlfriend on her birthday. I like to I like to have memories for me. But, uh, yeah, at one point, it was actually really funny. There, I caused a fight. I caused a peacock fight between two female peacocks. So I made a little pile of food. And there was one peacock with her baby eating. And, like, two or three minutes later... Another female peacock with two of her babies came over and just like stood there and they started making noises back and forth. And immediately the the baby peacock, the one that who was an only peacock, the mother who was there originally, ran off. It it's actually really funny because it crossed the street and it looked both ways. That's not a joke. The little baby peacock knew to look both ways. Um and uh it started calling and it just ran to what might be its dad i don't know but then these two female peacocks stood like just stood staring at each other for like two three minutes and then in one fast explosive motion they just went (laughs) attacked each other and all i saw was like feathers and then like one went running and the other one won and you know got to eat the pile of flax seeds but um i felt bad i was trying to distract them too i was throwing food at the other one like here's food i was trying to make a pile but it, it it was it was done they were locked They were going to fight. I watched a peacock cat fight. Yeah, so it was just such a wonderful day eating Sonic and then feeding peacocks for like 45 minutes in this random neighborhood. 
And uh, there were, like, cars coming by, and everyone was very kind, like, waiting for the peacocks and stuff. They all looked very annoyed at us that we were feeding the peacocks in their neighborhood. And uh, just to make sure, we were like, God, I hope no one ever hits a peacock. And we looked it up, and it's a crime in California to um, to hurt, assault, attempt to hurt, or accidentally hurt a peacock. Um, so, yeah, past people not wanting to hurt them or damage their cars with these big-ass birds, um, it's a crime. So, yeah, I'm going back to that neighborhood. I'm going to feed more peacocks. So something else that I learned about that's going on during this pandemic, and um, my girlfriend told me about it. It's some uh, TikTok trend going on, um, but it's an app larger than that. It's called Randonaut. Randonautica? Randonautica. And it's it's like a geocache app, if you know what that is. Um, I don't really, but essentially this app will... It claims to use, like, quantum bullshit and, like, other stuff. And, like, you know, you just have to really focus on what you want to find. But essentially, long story short, if you don't know what the app is, it essentially generates a random point, a random location um, near you. And you go there and you see what's there. Um, And it sounds interesting. Apparently, people find very creepy things. Um, You know, some fake, some not like the legitimate thing that kind of got it popular as fucked up as it is, is a group of people actually found a dead body um, and trigger warning or just like disgusting warning really quick. Um, They actually randomly stumbled upon. So these people were playing this game and they got a random location and the random location took them to a pier and on the rocks by the pier was a suitcase and they opened up the suitcase and in it was a garbage bag and um, it smelt. So they called the police because they, you know, half jokingly was like, what if it's a dead body? Um, they thought it was just old food or something, and it turned out to actually be, um, two people, um, who were dismembered and put in a bag and then in a suitcase. So, um, really disgusting and horrible stuff, and that kind of brought it popularity because people were reportedly finding very creepy things, very odd things, very random things. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I want to try it just because... You know, it's always fun to go searching for things. Not that I'm looking to find anything creepy, but I mean, like, it's a hike. You know, that's a fun hike with a goal. Um, I don't believe in it. I don't think that it's anything but, like, unfortunate coincidence. Um, And that's about that on on the Randonautica app. But you can watch a lot of, you know, YouTube compilations of people getting creeped out and finding weird stuff. So, who knows? All right, we're approaching the end of the episode. And um, I like to leave you guys with some song recommendations, maybe a recommendation of what to watch because, you know, everyone's kind of got a lot of time on their hands. And, um, yeah, I try to recommend stuff that I really, truly enjoy. So it's like if you listen to this, you get a, I guess, glimpse into my world of what I'm consuming at this time. Um, So, yeah, music-wise, there's uh, two songs that are just dope as shit going on right now. Uh, And that... uh, the first song that I would suggest is Just by uh, Run the Jewels. That's a, a J-U dollar sign T, Just. Yeah, really love the song. I think it's got a great message. I think it's like, you know, they're going for it. Um, yeah, I think it's like an 8 out of 10. I think it's a great song. Um, yeah, watch that. Listen to that. Watch the music video. Why not? Uh, another one that I would recommend, it's called Don't Rush featuring Heady One. It's, uh, it's blown up right now. It's got a lot of different remixes. Uh, there's a dope-ass remix with someone I think called Ra Alejandro on it. R-A-U-W Alejandro. That he kills it. He kills it. That one, in my opinion, might be better than the original. But um, yeah, Don't Rush featuring Heady One. Man, that's a sound. It's a good sound. It's something that's like really gaining a lot of popularity right now in the United States, at least in California. But I think around the world as well, like what's really being embrace right now is like some some african inspired shit some like caribbean inspired shit some like you know honestly other shit it's really interesting it's a new sound not new but like you know i'm fucking 23 so it's new to me but um yeah it's it's just really good and uh don't rush is like taking over the globe right now so uh if you haven't heard don't rush yet you're gonna um so you might as well hear it on your own terms it's it's really a great song like this is something that Like, this will be played on the radio, and it's also actually, like, a killer fucking song. So, it's a, it's a, it's a win-win. Um, because, like, radio music is fine most of the time. You know, you understand why it's on the radio, it's good. But, it's not always something that I would 
literally listen to in my spare time, Don't Rush, is like, I have had that shit on repeat. That shit is dope. Um, so yeah, listen to Don't Rush featuring Heady One. And then some uh, video recommendations. So if you have Disney+, Plus, you need to check out Black is King if you haven't yet. Um, yeah, Beyonce is next level. Beyonce is literally the greatest uh, artist to have existed at this point, and I would defend that position wholeheartedly. That's about it. Like, like really, that's besides the point. Black is King is just amazing. Uh, musically, unbelievable. Like, artistic-wise, like, the film itself, unbelievable. I mean, the fashion, uh, the outfits, the dance, like, everything is just really, like, there's, it's, it's like, love Beyonce or hate Beyonce, and I don't know how you hate Beyonce without, like, honestly, you know, having some, like, weird political opinion. Like, literally, objectively looking at Beyonce, that is a solid 10 out of 10, uh, consistently to the highest degree anyone's ever done it. Like, that's, I don't know why I'm making this face, like, me. Um, that's just what it is. Beyonce is the best artist to have existed to this point in history. The end. Um, so yeah, check out Black is King, and then there's a channel on YouTube um, that you should check out, and it's called The Behavioral Panel. Now, I want to do a small rant at the end of this show and just say there's a lot of, like, something that's really popular right now, and it might just be in my recommendations. Obviously, it's just in my recommendations. But it's a lot of, like, body language science and um, kind of people trying to, yeah, analyze body language in, like, past videos of important things, killers, anything at all. Um, and I've got a lot of things wrong with, um, with, like, faux experts, and it's not saying someone hasn't done some classes on it, but, like, shit is so minute that, um, yeah, a lot of these people honestly just want to, like, make popular YouTube videos. They're not necessarily educating you or, like, honestly trying to get the most accurate information or give the most accurate interpretation of what's actually happening in front of them. I've seen at least two or three channels that are very popular um, essentially do, like, a hack job at trying to be this objective truth seeker um, or truth seer. Um, not saying that they don't have skills and aren't seeing things, but they're usually lacking context or the, the specific case, like teaching absolutes, like I don't know shit about it, but if I don't know shit about it and I'm watching you and I like can feel you pushing, um, like I know you're a bullshitter, like you're, you're, yeah, you're bullshitting. But the behavioral panel is literally that, that style of content, the best possible version of body language analysis. And it's for literal body language experts who have worked for minimum 20 years, like the youngest dude there has worked 20 years as a specialist around the globe for the arm, like literally the best experts that you could have, giving you the best context and the honest, like clearest teaching, clearest like uh, view on it. They, they really explain the science behind it. They explain why they're doing what they're doing and why they're seeing what they're seeing and what they might mean or might not mean. And it's very upfront, it's very entertaining and it's very educational. So if you happen to be in like body language or just like behavioral stuff or just like to watch interviews and people analyze interviews, check out the behavioral panel. They're smaller than they should be. Uh, they're a recent channel, but they are top quality. Like if you don't know about them now, you're going to know about them soon. So yeah, that about wraps up today's episode. Um, I just want to say uh, I apologize for like the random hiatus. Um, yeah, there was just a lot on my plate, and it's really unfortunate that, like, this kind of fell through my fingers, and it's um, all a part of me trying to really learn self-discipline. Um, it's something that I lack, and and unfortunately, it showed by me missing out on this commitment. Um, so thank you for sticking with me. Um, thank you for listening to this episode, and uh, to many more to come. Also, unfortunately, the video podcast for the last episode, episode 13 that was released, the footage got corrupted. Um, I lost a lot of footage in in my own stupid, doesn't matter. I did it to myself is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, there wasn't a video podcast, but um, this one obviously will have a video podcast because you're watching it right now or you're listening to the audio podcast on the Tuesday and know that it's coming on Thursday. So yeah, thank you very much for listening to this episode of No Grossman Live. New episodes every Tuesday, audio podcast released on Anchor FM. Spotify, soon Apple, iTunes, podcasts, whatever you call it. They still haven't approved me. They're a mess. Wait, uh, I take that back if that makes you not approve me. Anyway, video podcast comes out on Thursdays on my YouTube channel. Thank you again. 
and I'll see you on the next episode. If you're watching this, this is the only dance move I have. Bye, y'all.